Good evening, everyone. It is great to see your faces here. I will tell you that uh, I joined the city in 2012. Some of the council members, I'll introduce them, but they'll know if we had three people show up, that was a good night. So we were taking bets. Is it more than three or less than three tonight? So some of us did better in the bet, so that's good. My name is Mike Land. I'm the city manager for the city of Coppell. I've been serving in that capacity since uh, April of 2017. Like I said, I started working for the city in 2012 as deputy city manager. So we are so pleased to have you here tonight. And we're, we're going to get started, and we're going to have some introductions. Uh, and uh, we'll give y'all a choice on something, if whether or not you want to participate this way or not. So uh, first, let me introduce City Council. Uh, see Mayor Pro Tem Biju Matthew. And I'm going to I'm going to work my way this way. Then uh, the the rookie, <laughs> uh, Councilman Don Carroll, Councilman Kevin Nevels. Our where's I saw it as John. Oh, there he is. Okay. John John, council member John John. Uh, and for staff, is there any other council member here? I'm looking around the room. Nope. Okay. All right. And for staff, we'll make we'll just pass this around because you're going to get to meet them a little bit later, but you happen to be closest, so we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Mindy Hurley with Community Development. Hello, I'm Mike Garza with uh, Public Works. Hi, everybody. I'm Tracy Leach. I'm in the city manager's office. Good evening. My name is Kevin Richardson. I serve as the fire chief. I'm Danny Barton. I'm the police chief. <laughs> Vanessa Tarver, strategic financial engagement. Uh, J.J. Seniceros, uh, Communication Specialist, City Manager's Office. I'm Jared Anderson, the Director of Enterprise Solutions. I'm uh, Sammy Lujan with the Police Department. Jessica Carpenter, Community Experiences. Kent Collins with the City Manager's Office. And, and I'm Kim Tian, the Director of Strategic Financial Engagement. She is a resident, too. Yes. <laughs> I was coming as a citizen, but okay. <laughs> Sandra Ortega, and I'm um, strategic financial engagement. Hi, I'm Jessica Almendarez, strategic financial engagement. Great. Thank you. By the way, just so everybody just kind of relax, this is very informal this evening. So here's the participation part. In the past, when we only had three people, we would ask if they'd introduce themselves, so that's a way to get to know who's here. Are y'all comfortable feeling out uh, that it's, okay, good, introduce yourself. And how long have you been in good, Coppell? Good evening. I, I am Brian Wrench. I work at Kimley Horn & Associates. We do engineering projects with the Public Works Department, and I'm here to be more engaged with the city, and I really like your city. Hi, I'm Lucy Cunningham, also with Kimley Horn. I don't live in Coppell, but enjoy working here. <laughs> I'm Alec Pollock. I'm also with Kimley Horn. I also do not live here, but I enjoy working with the city. Uh, finally, someone live here. <laughs> I, I live on uh, 208 uh, Highland Meadow uh, in Sandy Lake and more. Uh, moved here about two years ago. Nice to see you all. I, I will get Bell Textron. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Coker. I'm also a resident. I live over by the high school and work for Bell. <laughs> I'm Mohamed Almogi. I'm a strategic citizen since you guys keep coming up with these uh, fancy names. You know, you know, you know might, might as well. I've been in the city for 31 years. George Paramoff, I live at uh, 1721 East Beltline Road in Capel, and I've been here since 2014. I'm Dave Schaff. I've been a resident for 30 years. 
must be the senior one. I'm a retired uh, industrial chemist and certified food scientist. Poop scientist. That's hard to, hard to beat. Uh, Spencer Adams. I also live on Highland Meadow. Uh, been here about 10 years. Ms. Bentley, do you want to do you want to introduce? We're introducing ourselves. Uh, part of the family. I live on Plantation Hill. Okay, great. Good. Did I leave anyone out? All right. Well, thank you all. We appreciate you being here greatly. I am uh, now going to turn it over to you to walk us through. Perfect. All right. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for being here tonight, and thank you, Mr. Lan, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Jessica Menderes, and I'm the City's Budget Officer. Welcome to fiscal year 23-24 uh, town hall meeting, and tonight officially kicks off our budget season, and, and we're very excited to get started. We definitely, and let me, before we get started, I just want to say that we value our community, our community engagement and look forward to bringing our citizens the opportunity to engage with the budget process and gain knowledge. Our agenda tonight will include a bit about the city's, city of Capel's mission and vision 2040. Next, we will dive into the budget process, where to locate our main financial documents, information on the property tax process, and then enterprise solutions, fire, police, public works, community development, and community experiences will share updates on their current projects as well as new requests for fiscal year 24. After the presentation, citizens will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide input. And to get started, I would like to share a little bit about the city's mission. So our purpose is to provide for the health, safety, and quality of life of our citizens, and in doing so, provide a foundation for building a better community. Our departments, like community experiences, provide a quality of life and health to the community through classes, enrichment activities, the core, senior center, biodiversity center, the art center, the, our park system, and so much more, as well as our public works department provides itself on the safety, quality of life, accessibility, and the upkeep of the city, streets, buildings, and traffic, as well as creating a safe place for our ADA residents. They care, take care of our facilities, our roads, our water and maintenance, our street lights, traffic lights, and more. Our public safety department's responsibility is to serve the public by preserving and protecting life and maintaining a safe and peaceful community, which again aligns to our purpose of safety and quality of life. Vision 2040 is our budgeting guidepost. It is a citizen-led, City Council implemented strategic plan that both illustrates and provides the narrative of how each department forecasts and plans its projects with a goal of implementing pillars one through seven and the foundation in their upcoming fiscal year 24 budgets. So how do we accomplish our mission and vision? We accomplish our mission and vision um, to bring the quality of life, health and safety of our citizens First, through the support of our community, of course, uh, the engagement of citizens is vital to the future of the city of Capel, uh, building a community that our citizens love to live, play, and shop, and also work, requires frequent citizen involvement to collaboratively address concerns and ensure desi desired services are being provided. Your input on issues that matter to the city of Capel, council, and staff are important to us because we are, at the end, here to serve you. Also, through the support of the City Council, who create policy, provide direction, and make decisions that create the best outcome for the city. We also cannot do without funding. Property tax and sales tax, sales tax make up 82% of the general fund total revenues, as well as 52% of the overall revenues for the city. And of course, our employees. It is so important that through our dedicated service-driven employees who continue to learn, grow, and develop to provide the foundation for a better community for our citizens. Now that we know a little more about the city's mission and vision, we will continue to dive into the upcoming fiscal year 24 budget process and some important dates. So please note that the dates that are highlighted in red uh, were are the dates that citizens can interact with the budget process and provide input. So it starts all tonight here at town hall meeting and next at our budget workshops. The budget workshops will be held on the month of July 
And our final budget workshop will be July 27th. Next, we have also dates that are bound by our state legislature and our city charter. These are include our filing deadline of August 4th. Then we will have our public hearing for Crime Control Prevention District on June 13th, and our public hearing on the budget and tax, tax rate on August 22nd. We also expect to adopt the budget and tax rate that same night. Finally, our new fiscal year will begin on October 1st, 2023, and then we get started all over again. Um, and Finally, we have a little bit about where you can find a little more information on our financial documents. So we have these resources available for you in our city's transparency page and also our strategic financial engagement department website. Uh, first of all, we have our annual operating budget for fiscal year 23 there. We have our budget and brief for fiscal year 23, our soon to be published five-year forecast. Um, that's gonna cover years 23 to 27 in our annual comprehensive financial report for fiscal year 22. And I will now turn it over to our uh, Director of Strategic Financial Engagement, Kim Tian. She will go over our property tax uh, process and tax rate. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you, Jessica. So I would um, like to give you a brief overview of the process uh, that determine, uh, for determining and approving the tax rate. So first, the appraisal district uh, and Capel is served by both Dallas and Denton central appraisal districts. So both appraisal districts provide certified, certified property values to the city each year on July 25th. The appraisal district also sends out notices of appraised value to the property owners. Next, the certified property values are used by the tax assessor to calculate the tax rate. So the tax assessor calculates both the no new, no new revenue rate and the voter approval tax rate. And then the city publishes uh, notices regarding these property tax rates. And the, uh, this happens on August 7th. And then at the first council meeting in August, the governing body votes on the maximum tax rate to propose, which will be listed in the notice of public hearing to vote on the tax rate. This is not adopting the tax rate. It is simply setting the maximum tax rate that can be proposed by council uh, at the council meeting to adopt the tax rate. And this year, the vote on the maximum tax rate to be considered is scheduled for August 8th. Um, also in August, at the same meeting, the public hearing on the budget is held. Council holds the public hearing on the tax rate. So after the public hearings are held, then council can consider approval of the ordinance adopting the budget. And so if the budget is adopted, if that ordinance is approved, then council can then vote on the tax rate. Um, the public hearings on the budget and tax rate as well as the vote on the budget and, uh, and tax rate are scheduled for August 22nd this year. Uh, once the budget and tax rate are approved, uh, the tax assessor will uh, mail property bills uh, to property owners in October. And I know many of you are familiar with the seesaw effect slide, um, and I, but I'd like to cover it just one more time before we talk about the tax rate. Uh, this slide shows that as appraised values go up, the no new, no, no new revenue rate comes down, and that's because um, a smaller rate is needed when you have a larger increase to generate the same amount of revenue. Um, and the opposite, as the value comes down, the no new revenue rate goes up, and that's because it takes a higher rate to accomplish the same amount of revenue. If values are the same, the no new revenue rate is the same, and it generates the same amount of revenue. Um, and this concept is important as we move forward to talk about how the property tax revenue is calculated. And so on this screen, it shows you um, that the assessed values for all of the property in the city, which is provided again on July 25th by the appraisal districts, uh, is our starting number. We then subtract the exemptions, for example, your 5% homestead exemption, and then for people who are over 65 or disabled, uh, there's an exemption for that, to come up with the taxable value in the city. Once we have the taxable value, we divide that by 100 because the tax rate is per $100 of value. Uh, multiply that by the tax rate, and that gives us our property tax revenue. That same formula can be used by you to calculate your property tax bill on your own. 
when the appraisal district sends you your appraised value and you know the tax rate, you don't have to wait for your bill. You can uh, go through this process. So next, um, I wanted to talk about the, the tax rate. The total tax rate consists of two separate calculations. Um, the first is the M&O, or the maintenance and operations portion, which is revenue for the general fund. Uh, the portion of the property ta tax rate used to cover, um, this, this is used to cover the costs for your police and fire, um, for the core, the senior center, library, tennis and pickleball center, and then areas under public works, for example, cost to care for the streets, sidewalks, um, the alleyways, and city facilities. Um, this also covers general costs of running a business, um, similar to HR costs, IT costs, um, finance, as well as the city manager's office. I would say um, if I was thinking about this tax rate personally, this would be um, what I would use to pay for my grocery bill, to pay for my cell phone bill, um, other utilities, internet, um, gas, things like that, um, more personal living expenses. And this year the M&O rate is 0.441836. The second piece of the tax rate is the INS or the interest in sinking portion. And this is the revenue of the debt service fund. Property tax received from this portion of the tax rate is used to pay the principal and interest payments on outstanding debt. Uh, this rate is uh, set to cover only the principal and interest that is due during the fiscal year. Uh, this, and this portion can only be used for principal and interest. It can't be used for salaries or anything that would be covered by the um, the M&O portion. So if I were to compare this to my personal finances, this would be what I would use to pay my home mortgage. If I had student loan debt, I'd pay my student loan debt with this or car payments. Um, and the INS tax rate this year is the 0.076895. Um, and that brings us to a total tax rate of 0.518731 per $100 of valuation. And I think it's important to note that um, this is the lowest tax rate since uh, at least 1990. Um, and this tax rate was also accomplished uh, by increasing, we were still able to increase the over 65 and disabled exemption by $25,000. We increased it from 75,000 to 100,000. Um, and that was a council uh, driven initiative. <clears throat> and then finally, I wanted to, um, show this last slide because it shows the other entities that are included on your tax bill. I think receiving one tax bill for all of the taxing entities does cause some confusion. Along with the city, um, your tax bill includes the school district and the county. And this slide shows that the tax rates for the other and shows the tax rates for the other entities on your property tax bill. So the school district makes up the largest portion of your tax bill with a rate of just a little over $1.21 per $100 uh, of assessed value. And then if you live in Denton County, the county's tax rate is currently um, almost 22 cents, 0.217543. If you live in Dallas County, um, you're also paying not only the county, but you're paying for the hospital district, the college district, and the school equalization. And so the total tax rate for Dallas County entities is 0.579645. And so the city's tax rate, again, is 0 0.518731. Um, if you live in Dallas County, the city represents 22% of your total tax bill. Um, the rest is attributed to these entities. And so now that you know a little bit about the budget process and the property taxes, I'm going to turn it over to Jared Anderson, our Director of Enterprise Solutions, so he can cover some of the projects that he uh, has planned for next year. Thanks. Again, Jared Anderson, Director of Enterprise Solutions, going to talk a little bit about what we are um, got going on next year. So the first thing up there is Enterprise Solutions Replacement Fund. Um, very fortunate to have this fund. It's a fund that basically it's like a, it's a savings account, if you will, that we put money in, and when I need to replace hardware, um, I can pull from this fund. And so each year, as we replace hardware, we need to put money back into the fund to make sure it stays whole for when that equipment uh, reaches into life. So that is what the Enterprise um, Solutions Replacement Fund is. Very grateful to have it. It's very nice. Um, 
and even we've used it this year to one of the projects this year was to uh, transition our our compute to hyperconverge infrastructure uh, for the IT folks in the crowd. That's cool stuff. Any, anyway, um, okay. <laughs> moving uh, moving right along. So uh, so smart city. So I'm also the staff liaison to the smart city board. We had a couple requests or uh, recommendations coming out of the smart board. Uh, that would actually require some funding. So the first one uh, is to do a facility inspections. Uh, it's to get a determination of a, a base level of, um, we'll call it a, a environmentally friendly situation. So we're not necessarily looking for a LEED certified uh, standard, but we're going to try to find out if there is some buildings that we can, we can find a, a, a level for, so uh, that meets our needs. Smart City also identified uh, we'd like to brand the city of Coppell as a smart city. Uh, we are a smart city. I'm very proud of the fact that we have a lot of really cool things that we do that fall under the category of smart cities. Um, we don't brag on ourselves a lot, so this would give us an opportunity to do that. Um, and then moving right along, we're getting into some, uh, I, I can't talk too much detail in the sense of network security, but we're doing some improvements in security related to our network. Moving right along, the uh, so uh, network architecture, when we talk about that, that is a lot of our physical network. Uh, we are going to be making some improvements in the physical network as well, moving some core infrastructure from one facility to another. Again, i got to kind of stay high level there because um, it is important to keep us secure. Uh, the last one is uh, archiving software. Um, this is a, a software application that we're going to use to do a, a lot of archiving. If you can. I know this is great stuff. Uh, very exciting, but yes, it is. It, we identified a need uh, to make sure that we have some longer-term archivals. So when people file open records requests, we have a we can go back in time and meets the uh, the state of Texas uh, record requirements. So those are the things I'm working on. Um, next up, Danny Barton, our police chief. All right, I'm Chief Danny Barton, obviously with the Coppell Police Department. But uh, you may or may not know Animal Services is a part of the police department. And I was just going to highlight that our council actually had uh, approved a renovation of the dog run area the, the previous fiscal year. But we had some uh, some back and forth with the, with the contractor, so it got a little bit delayed but it got finished this year. So uh, we're really proud of that. The only thing that didn't get finished in that uh, project was we requested additional cameras. It's not a high dollar item, but uh, that's just part of that uh, build out. And we'll get that done this year, hopefully. So, in, so out of our crime control uh, district, the crime control district, which was just voted on um, for an additional 10 years, the, this, this fund receives a quarter cent of every cent of sales tax. And so the things that we're asking, and we're very limited as to what we can purchase or use those funds for. And everything on our list this year falls under uh, their requirements. So I know no one in here has ever been interrogated by the Coppell Police Department, I hope. Um, but we have a, uh, we have an interview room in the PD that is, it, one of the walls is a, our main hallway. And so sometimes we, we have to put signs out in the hallways telling everybody to be quiet, but otherwise while we're talking with a, a suspect, uh, voices will be heard in the background. So we're going to ask, uh, to soundproof and update the cameras that are in that room. Uh, the cameras that are in there are very old. And so... We're also going to, we have a very robust um, automated license plate recognition system in Capel. I think this is probably the best crime fighting tool we have. And this, I could stand up here for hours and tell you stories of how uh, this program has solved not just Capel crimes, but crime, major crimes in the nation and at times even federal crimes. So 
Um, we, we began that program back in 2016 is when it went live. Uh, they told us the cameras would need to be replaced every three years. And um, I just wanted to test that out and see how long they would really go. So now we're eight years in and uh, they're starting to kind of fail and go out. And uh, the, the, the automatic, automated license plate recognition software, there's more companies in the game now. When we got into it, there was really one. Uh, the costs have come down and the technology's gotten way better. So uh, we're hoping to, uh, we won't replace every camera in the city, um, but we'll, we'll phase, it, phase it over time. And then on top of that, so the automatic license plate readers are at fixed locations. They're at fixed intersections. And that's great and they do a lot of good work, but we, right now, catalytic converter thefts is, is probably the biggest crime going on in the nation. And, um, and so we needed a way to target uh, parking lots. So they now have uh, basically flexible cameras that we can we can move anywhere we want in the city of wherever we think we're getting hit the hardest it's a lease program it is extremely inexpensive and um, and plus we wanted to try out the lease before we buy any of these types of cameras because we want to make sure it's the best uh, um, best use of our, our our dollars so that's all the pd is going to be asking for this year and um, next up is my favorite fire chief Chief Richardson. Good evening. My name is Kevin Richardson, and I am the fire chief. Um, I'll cover a few things from the fire department. Um, I'll start with uh, things from last year. So 2023, couple, some, some highlights that happened. The fire department also runs the emergency medical services here in town. It means the ambulances. Um, all of our ambulances and the fire trucks have paramedics on them, so they basically carry the same equipment. Um, one transports patients to the hospitals, the other one doesn't. But they all have the uh, cardiac monitors. The, the brand is called LifePak. That's not a misspell. That's, that's a branding thing. Um, they come with a maintenance agreement, and last year the maintenance agreement had expired. And if you're familiar with them, they're very high-tech pieces of equipment nowadays, basically computers. Um, and so we renewed that agreement this year. Also in the city of Coppell, we are the region's technical rescue team. Um, what that means is we share resources with our neighbors, for instance. We don't support um, having a hazardous materials team in the fire department. We share resources with our neighbors who do. So what we provide back is a technical rescue team. So uh, managing that regional rescue uh, team has um, some equipment needs that we identified and replaced and enhanced last year. Um, our, the emergency management uh, division for the city also falls within the responsibility of the fire department. And one of their responsibilities is managing the radios, not just for public safety. Uh, those are the communication devices in the vehicles and on their persons. Um, they do it for, for the entire city and it's a tiered response or it's a tiered level. So uh, there were some radio replacements uh, last year as well. Some proposed um, items for this year include um, the fire department's training room. If you're not familiar with us, it's this building that's right adjacent, connected to the fire station number three right here. Um, it has 80 chairs in it. It uh, was constructed almost 19 years ago, and those tables and chairs uh, have been worn pretty bad, and uh, they need to be replaced. The room is used by a lot of other people, not just the fire department. Um, also within the fire department is the life safety park. If you haven't had a chance to, to visit, I encourage you to do so. Uh, one of the, it's uh, in its sixth year, um, and one of the um, things that we're finding out now after six years is that we have lack of storage. The term vehicle storage isn't for our vehicles. Um, it's really for the training props that they have on site there. Uh, they have bikes and training props and, and, and uh, Jeeps for the kids and some other stuff. There just isn't storage there. There's a space for a storage building. Um, it was uh, value engineered during the, the construction process, but this need for storage is still there. Um, next up is um, a next phase for our radio replacements as I talked about earlier. Uh, it's a tiered replacement, so um, the next phase would replace 
um, a number of radios that will be taken out of primary uh, public safety service and pushed out to uh, non non essential areas such as um, in our parks our uh, non public safety the next item is uh, the fire station number five um, back in 2017 our city had done an integrated risk management plan um, that identified some shortfalls and some needs for the city to add and and relocate a fire station um, and then COVID hit along with some uh, economic uncertainty uh, so the plan got placed on hold uh, five years later in 2022 we updated the plan uh, identified that the service gaps not only are there but they had worsened we had uh, provided information with our elected officials and um, are in the process of trying to seek funding to move forward for adding fire station number five with that i will move on to our director of public works, Mr. Mr. Mike Garza. My favorite director. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Good evening. My name is Mike Garza, the director of public works. Um, I, I do get the pleasure of going through the next 22 slides with you. Um, <laughs> seems like the ones pre prior to me had one slide. I have a few. So the Public Works Department uh, is responsible for maintaining a lot of the infrastructure throughout the community, uh, including all the city facilities, um, streets, paving, sidewalks, uh, the water and sewer systems, storm drain systems, the uh, fleet, the, 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 all the uh, city's fleet, and the uh, traffic signals and pavements and, and signs and markings throughout town. And so currently um, in our public works department for this year, we've, uh, we've replaced our GPS and surveying equipment. Uh, this is what we use to, to help us uh, design projects in-house at times and to identify and locate existing utilities throughout the, the city. Um, for, for next year, we are looking at replacing our tire changer and balancer in our fleet department. We do a lot of uh, our own maintenance, uh, the majority of our own maintenance in-house with uh, our fleet division. And then we're also looking at adding a brine storage facility. Now, the picture here shows snow and ice. We do get snow and ice at times, but it it's, seems like it's more frequent these years. And at, uh, at the same time, we skip a year or two. And so we stockpile material. And by the time we need it, if we haven't had a snow or ice event in a couple of years, that material has gone bad. And so this brine storage facility will allow us to maintain that, that material for longer periods of time if we don't use it uh, for a, years, a year or two at a time. Um, in our utility operations, this is uh, from the water sewer fund. Uh, we are currently replacing several vehicles in, uh, for our utility operations teams. And coming up uh, for some of the requests that we have for next year, uh, we will doing, we'll be doing some uh, condition assessment and inspections of our utility system, our water and wastewater system, as well as repairing a lot of our sanitary sewer manholes and then some additional uh, water and sewer system point repairs and rehab and locations. Um, and then we're also going to be rehabbing our, our storage tanks. We have two. Uh, storage tanks at uh, Village Parkway Pump Station, there, which that hold 10 million gallons of, of water, and so those uh, will be uh, rehabbed in the coming year. Our next uh, area is our drainage utility district. This is the 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 fund that that funds our stormwater projects, and so currently we are working on the Arborbrook uh, Channel design, which is also known as Stream G3. We recently had a uh, public meeting on that this, this Tuesday night to, do, to go over the project with the, the residents. Um, we do an annual mowing of the Bethel Channel that's behind Hard 8. Uh, we're allowed to mow that by the Corps of Engineer permit once a year. And then we do annual creek cleaning of removing trees and debris from streams and creeks so that they don't cause problems with blockages and, and, and those sorts of things. And then we are currently working on putting that together a scope and design for um, uh, the channel bank in front of St. Joseph's off of Sandy Lake. If you drive by there, uh, there is some um, erosion taking place. And then for next year, uh, we have a couple other projects. Asbury Manor Channel, this is over off of uh, South Coppell Road, and, I mean North Coppell Road uh, in the Asbury neighborhood. We, we own a small piece of that channel where we need to do some improvements to, to make sure that the channel conveys the flow. And then we are also working on a project uh, in Hunterwood Park. There's some additional erosion that's taken place over the last couple of years with all the rain events that we've had. 
um, that we need to stabilize the banks of that creek. And then continuing, continuing on with the uh, drainage utility dis district for next year, we also have uh, some outfalls, storm drain outfalls that, that discharge into the creek that we're going to be doing some repairs on. Um, just like the water and sewer uh, condition assessment, we are going to be doing some storm water condition assessment on our underground storm drain system. And then that same neighborhood where we're doing the Arbor Brook uh, channel project, that's called the North Lake Woodlands. We're looking at doing a drainage study in order to, to determine what we can do to improve the drainage in that neighborhood. And then a, 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 another one that we will be doing is uh, stream, a stream bank stabilization repayment program. And this is for folks that live along Denton Creek that may have uh, bank stabilization issues. We will be able to advance them a fund and they would be repaying back through the dud fund. Some capital improvement projects that we're working on. Um, we are currently in the process of reconstructing South Beltline Road. Some of y'all may have driven down there recently. We are getting closer. We anticipate this project to be complete uh, this summer. Um, looking forward to that. We are also working on a, a pavement condition study. This is what we do. Uh, we we uh, do an assessment of all of our roadways, streets, alleys, and sidewalk to determine the prioritization of which streets are going to be replaced and re, um, reconstructed next. And then we also annually do ADA improvements throughout town th to facilities, to uh, roadways, and um, uh, yeah, just additional facilities and roadways is where we do ADA improvements annually. And then our annual street, alley, and sidewalk repair. <clears throat> Uh, next year, we're looking at uh, improving our service center, expanding our service center. This is the location that houses our par parks operations team, as well as our public works operation te operations team. We share a facility at the service center, and we've kind of outgrown that facility, and so we're looking at expanding uh, that facility to house our teams. And again, we continue our ADA improvements, our street alley and sidewalk repair, and then once we're completed with uh, South Beltline this summer, we will begin construction on South Royal from Sandy Lake Road down to 635, full reconstruction similar to what we're doing with South Beltline. With that, I will turn it over to Mindy Hurley with Community Development. Hi, once again, I'm Mindy Hurley um, with Community Development. In, in Capel, Community Development includes um, building inspections, code compliance, environmental health, planning and zoning, economic development, and neighborhood engagement. So I only say that because some of my requests may seem random, but they really do all make sense for our department. So um, our first one is the village concept coordinator. Um, out of Vision 2040, there was a task force created for the future-oriented approach to residential development. And that group has come together and has proposed a village, a virtual village concept in the city of Capel to support our residents residents that are 55 and plus um, and over. So um, in order to coordinate all of that, we do need to hire an individual to, to, um, to basically manage that. So that would be the village concept coordinator. We also have in here a retail attraction consultant. Vision 2040 also um, mentions the desire for increased retail in the city of Capel. So we are looking at hiring a retail attraction consultant to help us. That is a common practice um, due to the nature of the specialization and the relationships that they have with our with our retail um, with, with retailers, I guess is the better way. Um, also, we have a proposal for a food truck park in Old Town Capel. So this is um, to support the area, also to bring some additional dining options down there, and so to help support and draw additional visitors down to Old Town Capel. So with that, there would be um, some some money dedicated for creating the infrastructure to support that food truck park, as well as um, some dollars to help with the operations of that. And then um, community development manages the solid waste contract for the city of Capel, and we are currently in a contract with Republic Services. Um, that contract is set to expire in 2026, and if the city does not want to renew that contract, we would need to hire a consultant to come to help us as we navigate uh, uh, going out to bid to select a new solid waste um, co contract. And then um, finally, um, with the aging of, of the community and the increase in rental properties, we did um, get approval to hire a, a, an additional code compliance officer this year. And so we have in the budget um, a proposed for a vehicle to support that individual. 
And with that, I will turn it over to Jessica Carpenter. Good evening. I am Jessica Carpenter, Director of Community Experiences, and if you're wondering what that is, um, it's formerly Parks and Recreation, so we rebranded the department back in January of this year, um, and so we uh, oversee 544 acres of parkland and seven public-facing facilities, one of those being the library. Um, so just to kind of kick off our uh, general fund request, so going back to this current year that we're in, 22-23, um, we just had one request, and we are doing a new, it's basically a comprehensive plan for the Community Experiences Department. So it's the Parks Master Plan, um, and this is really going to drive uh, what our department um, offers for the community over the next five to seven years. So there's going to be a really robust citizen input component of this process. There'll be surveys and public input meetings, so I hope to see every single one of you at those. So this is good, good turnout. It means good things for the Parks Master Plan. Uh, and we're in development uh, in the re request for proposals phase of the master plan now, and so we'll be selecting a consultant soon. Um, and then 23-24 request, uh, just again, another, just one request is replacing some furniture at our library. So a lot of the furniture in that building is actually original to the original building and back in 1995, so it, it's time for some of that furniture to be replaced. And then moving on to our other fund, which is the Coppell Recreation Development Corporation. So the CRDC is a one half cent sales tax, uh, just like CCPD is a quarter cent. This is the half cent uh, specifically dedicated to sort of betterment of the parks and recreation system, facilities, trails, um, lots of those amenities. And so uh, in the current year that we're in, you're going to see a lot of these um, have a strong focus on maintenance and replacement. We do have an aging park system and aging facilities. So uh, we we have a heavy focus on making sure that those um, still um, are world-class facilities and amenities. And so the first six requests there are all for the core, which um, in this current year or next year turns 24 years old. So again, we're seeing some aging of the pools. Um, for those of you that have residential pools, you know that when you hit that 20 plus year mark, you're going to start looking at some major replacements. So pool plaster, pumps, um, some furniture, uh, we're going to be replacing all of the weight machines in the fitness center. Um, so a lot of those amenities. Um, we're looking at uh, repairing some erosion that's happening at Andy Brown East around those ponds as well, and that's in development. Um, and then a few of these things here at the bottom are already complete for the year. We have upgraded our outdoor warning siren of our lightning prediction system. So we have updated that system from Thorgard to Perry Weather. Um, and so if you've been in our parks recently and heard those sirens um, predicting lightning, that is what those are. Um, just actually today, we completed the Andy Brown West, West Bridge deck replacement. So that's a bridge that's on the west side of Andy Brown West. Um, and so we removed the lumber off that bridge and replaced that decking, and it is currently open as of today. Uh, and then last week, we completed the playground surface replacement over at Allen Road Park. So that surface was at end of life. Moving on to proposed requests for 23-24. Again, we're going to be sticking to the theme of maintenance and replacement um, for most of the items that we're requesting. The first one is uh, the synthetic turf replacement at middle school north. So you're probably wondering why would the city be involved in that project? So uh, we have a lot of interlocal agreements with the ISD. We maintain really strong partnerships with the school district. Uh, and a lot of our youth sports association utilize the fields within CISD. One of those is middle school north. Um, and so we, um, as part of that agreement, um, kind of go 50% into the replacement of those synthetic turf fields. So that middle school north field is up for replacement in the summer of 2024. So this is our end of that, planning for that replacement. Uh, we're doing some more bridge decking replacement over on the North Levy Trail Bridge. And so this is the trail that's on the north side of Denton Creek uh, between Denton Tap and MacArthur. So similar to what we did over at Andy Brown West this week. Um, we're going to be replacing 58 picnic tables throughout the park system. So again, those are becoming end of life. Um, a lot of them had some ADA concerns as well. And so we'll be fixing those. We're doing a lot of painting of park amenities, um, everything from handrails on the North Levy Trail to um, awning poles and light poles over at Wagon Wheel. Uh, we're replacing our spectator shading at the Wagon Wheel baseball fields. Um, so those are just those um, shade structure awnings. 
Um, and then the last request is our wagon wheel soccer practice field fence. And so this is one new item we're requesting to uh, put some, place some fencing around some of our practice fields. We're seeing a lot of overuse and unauthorized use um, of those fields, uh, making them tougher to use um, for our youth sports associations um, when we need those. So we're gonna be requesting a fence there. And with that, I believe I am to call the rest of the staff down here and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Twenty-something years ago, I was part of the, uh, the the planning of the Rolling Oaks Cemetery. You know, because at the time, I think we were looking for ways to make Capel more homish, because we felt like we're a very transient city. People come and kids finish high school, they sell the house, and they go somewhere else, and the cycle goes on. So, it's a very good project. Uh, our community, namely the Capel Muslim community, has benefited from that. And I'm at the point where I'm getting harassed by my community because we need to add more, uh, you know, to the ones. So is there anything in the future or any plans to look into that? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mohammed, for your question. So uh, we, one of the facilities we operate is our Rolling Oaks Memorial Center. So that's Star Cemetery and Columbarium. So if you didn't know that we have that in town, uh, we do. And like he said, it's a wonderful amenity for the community to have. It's been extremely popular. We opened up a second phase of the cemetery back in 2020, and a large portion of that phase two has already been sold out for, for pre-need burial spaces. Uh, so as part of that comprehensive master plan I talked about that we're engaging in this year, a component of that uh, will be um, we're looking at hiring a cemetery consultant to project the need for a phase three. Um, so that's our next step in that process. Thank you. Um, I have some questions for Mr. Garza, since you're doing public works. Um, the, as you all probably know, I have been upset about, and so have met my neighbors about the um, sidewalks that y'all put in or contracted for in Capel, uh, where they have um, uh, curves on the sides instead of the flare sides. And when you go down uh, Freeport, and also at the corner of Sandy Lake and Whispering Hills, some of those curves that are not, have not been there very long already are chipped off with the rebar hanging out. And I, you know, when you're talking about a budget, it just seems that, uh, first of all, you know, they're a trip hazard, but secondly, they're more expensive to maintain. They're twice as expensive to put in those uh, traffic islands that are on our sidewalks in um, uh, on Long Plantation and other places are something like four times the amount of the flare sites. So how do you, uh, do you budget for that, you know, to have to repair these things all the time? Because those ones on Freeport and the ones that, there's also one in uh, old downtown that's already chipped up and the rebar's hanging out, showing. So how is that accommodated for in, in a budget process? Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, we, we do. So as we go through, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to do, we are doing a pavement condition study this uh, summer. And what we do is we drive every street, every alley, and every sidewalk. And from that, 
we, we create a um, prioritization list of the condition of those. And, and the ones that rise to the top are, the, are obviously the safety ones. And so um, we, we gather the data, we find out where the areas that are most in need based off of safety, and we, those rise to the top of our priority list to take care of. So that, that assessment's usually done every four to five years. We're looking at doing it more frequently because there's better methods and better technologies now than there were 10 years ago. But from that, every year, we allocate funds for repair of sidewalks, ADA ramps, streets, alleys. And so we identify those locations and, and have budget accounted for for those. And as we get requests, because we don't have the opportunity to drive around town and look for all the areas. So as, as we find them, we'll take care of them. And as we get requests from homeowners or residents that say, here's, here's, a, here's a situation where we have a safety issue, um, we put it on our list and we'll go take care of it. If, we'll take care of it right away if it, is, is, it, is, it poses a, a serious threat. Um, otherwise, we would put it on our list and get it taken care of. And so you would be able to call us and let us know those locations, and we'll take care of those locations. And, and I can get with you afterwards and find out exactly which location you're talking about. Do you do like a cost-benefit analysis for putting like the flare sites, which last a lot longer and require very little maintenance versus the ones you chose and put in? So, it, and and the ones the the ones um, it depends on the location of where they're going in and how much room we have to put them in, um, and that determines what kind of style of ADA ramp that we put in. And so, and it's really, as we are developed, essentially developed out and we're rehabilitating locations and, and reconstructing locations, depending on how much room we have and how much area there is, whether or not we have to acquire, or purchase right away or purchase an easement from the landowner, will determine what style of ADA ramp goes in. Um, there's really, really not a cost benefit it's really what works best for that location and how can we achieve the the correct per, the correct uh, style for that location and you would meet with me to discuss this uh, mike i'll take Go it miss bailey on the 25th of april uh, the the uh, consultant and corey will be making a presentation and the council and the council will have an opportunity to give us some policy direction to the point where um it really is about real estate. And when he talks about the size and how much room we have and not to bore everybody here, but we're, we just need direction. Does the council want us to, to acquire easements, uh, purchase the property or use eminent domain so that we can do more of the flare solution versus the solutions that we have on the smaller sites? So that'll be on April 25th. Okay, great. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Boone. Uh, I live on uh, Sandy Lake and Moore uh, near the junction. Um, I found out that during peak hours, uh, coming out from the neighborhood onto Sandy Lake is very challenging. Um, and also uh, sometimes uh, some junction ha has a cutout that you can pull and, and then wait for the traffic to slow down to, cut, uh, to pull into your neighborhood. And I, I found out it's kind of there, there are a lot of blind spot, you know, especially when I'm waiting there and there's another car also wait. I, it's very hard to see uh, that. I'm not sure. I'm coming, uh, I moved here from Indianapolis uh, about two years ago and roads a little bit wider and then car goes slower. So over there it's like 30 miles per hour. Here it's just, yeah, Texas. <laughs> Everything's big and fast, right? So, uh, yeah, I'll just find out a little bit challenging. I'm not sure if there's any, is there any like traffic um, study to see, should we adjust, uh, make it faster maybe? I'm <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. Um, so to, to make the traffic a little bit safer to travel. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, one thing we do do is we, we, we keep an eye on our traffic patterns um, our signal timing, and we peer, and periodically, frequently, we, we adjust and make sure we're doing what's best for the travel time through the city. 
Um, I, can, I can get with you and, and look at that particular situation and we can analyze it and see what, if there's any additional needs or um, if there's something blocking the way. Usually, usually it's bushes or trees or something. We can get those trimmed up so that we can have good site visibility at the intersections and those sorts of things. But we do keep, we do um, monitor the traffic patterns and the signal timing periodically and frequently to make sure uh, we have people passing, being able to get onto the road and travel through town. Okay. I can get with you and we can find a location and take a look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Ramesh. Um, I also, um, about the, when you guys did the street on plantation and you tied into the, the old drainage that goes into that, uh, Sort of a creek, sort of a drainage slough. I don't know what you what do you I don't know what you guys call it, but it goes down from uh, where it hits plantation and goes all the way you know further down. Anyway, that doesn't drain; it ponds there. And since we're coming into mosquito season, and if you look at it like well, when, of course when it rains, you, everything's full of water. And I know you had it cleaned out. There was a contractor that went in there and cleaned it out, so to speak but it still doesn't drain. So where the water comes out of the buried um, drain pipes, you know, whatever you want to call it, the one, the, sort of the roadway for the coyotes when it's dry, um, it just sits there and it's really gotten yucky looking now. So it, it doesn't go down the hill and it doesn't dry out very much. Okay, we'll so take a- So there's a pond there. We'll take a look at it. Thanks. Thank you. Ramesh? Uh, so, so this um, on Beltline between MacArthur and uh, Mocking, Mockingbird, there's a parking spot I think for three or four cars. So several corporate residents have asked if there's a plan to increase parking space there because uh, during the weekends people park there and they bike on the trails. So is there an, any plan to add parking there? No, I, I believe the parking you're referring to is for, there's a lift station there for the Cypress Water Sanitary Sewer, and they use that to access the lift station and maintain that facility. Uh, I don't believe it's a trail parking. No, it's highly, it's highly used by the folks wanting to hop on the Campion, and so, but, but Mike is right, it's for the lift station. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So I'm not sure when the DART is coming in, but is there any planning or budget cycles with regards to the DART coming nearby? Is there any work being done around that? It depends on what you want to mean by planning, because there's lots of conversations going on. It uh, is scheduled for 2026. Okay. And so I know, for example, the police chiefs uh, are having some conversations uh, because the stations in Addison, uh, Carrollton, we are partners with them. We already know some of the issues that have been happening in Carrollton because it's uh, one of the final stops. We just don't know where the sequence will be with the DART station uh, in Cypress Waters. <clears throat> so the answer is yes, uh, and we have time to work on it, and we actually have time to see how the changes that they're trying to make at DART now are affecting specifically Carrollton. Uh, so does that help you? You budget for it later, uh, as far as on our side of the equation, know what the impact w would be yet. Um, because the Cypress station is in the city of Dallas, yes. right? And so what we can all kind of imagine with the 7-Eleven at the corner, uh, but we'd also know that there's going to be commercial development in and around the DART station by the Billings lease. So who knows that they'll actually be walking down the road. Okay. okay? And sure. Uh, you want to get a mic? Over here. You want to come to the mic? Oh, yeah. oh, did you ask for a mesh to come up? Yeah. Board? It's, yeah <laughs> the, so, the board chair? Board chair. Come on up. <laughs> um, yeah, smart city. So, man, I'm going to have to pull this one. We have a slide. I can take you to a SharePoint <laughs> slide deck uh, where we gave this presentation. Smart city covers a lot of things is what I'll say. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to, because I can't remember exactly what we've got uh, specific, but it, it is related back to a lot of technology, a lot of, um, it's basically being smarter 
uh, with our assets, smarter with infrastructure, smarter with. Uh, yeah. He wants to take it. Yeah, come on. Ramesh, you can take it. Yeah. Go ahead and finish. I'll just add, I'll put a cherry on the top. No, I'm good. I'll stop right there. You go, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great question, and, and being the chair of the Smart City Board, it's an honor and privilege to answer that. Uh, so thanks to the Carpel citizens back during 2030 vision, uh, they wanted to make sure that a city is prepared to, to be at the leading edge of technology and to make sure that we use technology to serve our citizens. So the city council, in their infinite wisdom, decided to create two, two new boards. One was a smart city, the other is a Ford board. The, and the purpose of the smart city is to look down uh, 2035, 2040, and beyond, and uh, plan on um, services and projects that leverage technology to make the life of citizens better. Right. So um, things change doesn't happen that quickly, right? So. The board meets once a month. We come up with ideas, uh, and then we make recommendations to the city council, uh, usually once a year. And uh, based on the recommendation, city council goes through the budgeting process and decides if they should implement the projects we're talking about. Does it answer your question? Yeah. 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 Yes, all leave up. So, yes, yeah, so that's why it's difficult to just quickly wrap that up. A good example uh, is smart meters, the smart meter, the water project. So, yeah, so that is a good example of where we're starting to leverage data to make decisions and actually notify folks if you've got a leak and all this sort of fun stuff. Um, but data is the foundation of everything. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at it from AV, AI, um, artificial intelligence, auto, autonomous vehicles. Sorry, I get caught up in acronyms sometimes. Anyway, the, uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that we're looking at. Um, if you have time, I'll, I'll pull up the presentation afterwards, and you, I'll take you through it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Um, do you guys put together like a backup when you propose all these things? Is there? Do you put propose some alternatives? Because um, with the economy kind of where it's going, or maybe going. Um, do you do anything, do you, do you mark things up as things that can be put on hold? I'm not talking about fire and police stuff, that's a totally different thing to me. But, you know, some of the other stuff, do you put those proposals in like a hierarchy? And um, do any of you guys in your departments do that? I, 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 can, I can talk about, uh, so we put together a five-year forecast and what we do is all the departments get together and list out all the projects and our needs for the next five years. Some of us have 10-year plans. And we get together and we look at what are the necessities, what are the needs, what are the wants, what are the uh, nice-to-haves. And knowing in the state of the economy where we are, we have looked at and we have pushed projects out. There was our list that we showed today, I know at least for public works, we probably had another 10 or 12 that we wanted to put, and so we had to prioritize and realize which ones can we push off for other years. Uh, we have a lot of water and sewer projects that we had on our list, and, and in order to keep the water rates where they are, we had to push them out so that, and luckily we can. Um, we, we have that opportunity where they're not must-haves right now. It's good to get ahead and be proactive so that they don't become emergencies, but we do we do um, consciously make those decisions on what can be pushed and what do we need today. That's that's. I would say, and I, on Tuesday night at the council member uh, council meeting work session, we're going to be talking about the five-year forecast and the process that we use to, as Mike was uh, sharing, prioritize our projects and the process that the assistant directors uh, come together and how they handle that and uh, really seeking to find out, come together. Uh, and break down what is, you know, we all come and what we want for our departments, but ultimately it's what is, does the city need? What is gonna support the 2040? What, are, what is the most important for the city? And they work together to determine that. Um, and they do a really good job at working together and challenging each other to prioritize and to determine what they need to pro, uh, propose to the council. 
I would add the, the additional layer to that is the city council actually sets what the goals are <coughs> and uh, the objectives that we have. So the 2040 is a starting point. The council prioritizes opposite of 2040 and then it goes to staff and then staff works from there. So it really starts at the 2040 and the city council and then when staff goes through and making the proposal and ultimately at the end of the day, it's the city council that makes the decision on where we spend our money. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right. So uh, first of all, thank you all for being here this evening. We do really appreciate it. This is probably the most attended if you even include Kim Lee Horn. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so, so uh, even taking them out, we're still having a great attendance tonight, so thank you very much. The presentation will be online. Uh, many of the things that we talked about tonight are out there on the webpage already as far as information, and uh, we just look forward to continuing to work with all of you and taking your input in as we go through this process over the next several months. And in July, if you really don't have anything to do, you saw that schedule. Just about every week we have something going on in July related directly to the budget. So we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. And thank you again for choosing to call Capel home and thank you for allowing us to serve you. Y'all have a good night. I have one more thing. If you have any questions or comments that you want to share with us, go to budgetinput at capeltx.gov. You can email us there and you, to share information or if you have a question, we'll respond to you. Thank y'all. Good night. Have this great closing.